What's up, everybody? So, here's my new Bible. It's a um, King James Bible, hardcover. It's only a $10 Bible, um, and I'll, I'll put the link in the description below or above. But, basically, I, I uh, this is my, uh, my soul-winning Bible, and I just wanted to do a quick run-through of it um, and let you know that if you want a copy of this, I will sell these Bibles um, just as they're made right here for, um, I'm thinking $20 if you want a copy. But anyway, let's get into the Bible here. Um, in the opening pages, um, I have my little cheat sheets for soul winning. Um, then you have the opening Holy Bible right there. And, you know, I'll get, on, I'll get into this. And I have, um, I have about... Um, one, two, three, four, five flags up top, and four um, tabs on the side. John 3.16, Acts 16.31, Romans 3.23, and Revelations 20.14. And we'll get into these. And then in the back of the Bible, I have three more of my cheat sheets um, in the back. And I'll go through these. Um... Yeah, and, 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 and so what I wanted to do was go through the Bible here. <laughs> Hopefully the wind stops. That looks kind of cool though, huh? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I'll go through it real quick and show you what this is about. Like I said, this is my soul winning Bible that I use to uh, win people to Christ. And so far I've already won. I think four people to the Lord with this Bible in the past um, couple weeks. So it's actually a really good system. It works really well. Um, and I like the hardcover um, for soul winning. Um, it's not leather. I think it's just, I don't know what it is, but it's pretty nice. But anyway, let's get into it. At the beginning, you know, these are just um, little cheat sheets to help me keep me on point. Um, this is the introduction sheet. Um, you know, so when I knock on the door, you know, I introduce myself. I tell them my name and which church I come from. And, you know, I don't really do this part anymore, this do you go to church. But, you know, you, you, you basically ask them, you know, do you go to church anywhere? And then, you know, more important than church, if you were to die today, do you know for sure if you go to heaven? And then I have different responses. Like, they might say, well, no thank you. Right? If they say no thank you, then, uh, or, you know, if they... Ex express any kind of like like just totally like I could tell that I'm unwelcomed and then I just say thanks have a nice day and I leave right um, but if they give me like an I'm busy then I'll offer them a YouTube card and see if you know maybe they uh, maybe they are busy right now but they maybe they want to hear the message later when they're not busy so I give them a YouTube card and then maybe if I have uh, an opportunity um, I'll, I'll quote them this Bible verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, um, which you can see right there. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I'll, uh, I'll um, explain that to him real briefly about how, you know, the Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith, and it's not of works. You know, nobody's going to go to heaven and be boasting that I was better than you or anything like that. It's all through faith in Jesus. And if they're already saved, then I'll ask them three questions. Or um, let, let's say um, they think they're saved. I'll usually, and I don't have this on the sheet, but if it, I'll ask them three questions. I'll ask them, um, you know, how do you know you're saved? Um, is there any way you could lose your salvation? And... Uh, the third question is, if, if, if I was an unbeliever, what would you tell me that uh, the Bible says I have to do to be saved? And, you know, that will give me a general idea of where they are and if I need to uh, show them more, more scriptures or wherever I need to go from there. If they're already saved, if I ask them all those three questions and I determine they're saved, um, then I'll, I'll ask them um, about baptism, if they've been baptized. And then maybe I'll invite them to church or I'll ask them if... if um, if there's anything that, you know, the church can pray for them about. And then I'll just wish them a, a good day, nice to meet them, maybe get their name and 
and uh, that'll be that. But if, if I notice that they need salvation, um, I'll quote him John, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, that says, and I don't have the whole verse here, but it says, You may know that you have eternal life. Um, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And I'll explain to them that my purpose uh, for being at their door is that I'm coming to share the gospel in the name of Jesus from God's word, not my words, and showing them that um, how they, they can know for sure that they died, that they'd go to heaven according to the Bible. And then I ask them, you know, can I show you some uh, scriptures? It'll only take me about 10 minutes. You know, you know, generally it takes me about 20 minutes to go through this, but I could run through it in 10 if I really, really needed to. Um, if if they absolutely tell me no, uh, I you know, then I just say, okay, well, can I leave you with a Bible verse? And, and then I'll leave them with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. But anyway, that's my introduction page. And then let's, and then, so if, if that, um, if it's time to show them the gospel and they want to hear it, then I immediately jump into um, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I have this highlighted here because um, if you go to my green tab here, you'll notice it's Romans 3, 23. And if you open up to, man, this wind. <laughs> um, Romans 3, 23 right there. Oh my goodness. Romans 3, 23 right there is highlighted. And the wind just had to come and ruin my parade, didn't it? Uh, let me move it down here. But yeah, you'll see my Romans 3.23 tab right there. There's Romans 3.23 highlighted for them. And um, I have different color codings in this Bible for different things. So the main verses are highlighted in, in, um, in pink right there. So it's real. It, it pops out to your eye right away. And anyways, and then I'll tell him uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. It says, what is a sin? And I explain to him what a sin is right there. Sin is the transgression of the law. What is the punishment for sin? Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. And you know, I don't uh, usually jump to the Bible on all these verses. That's why I just use my cheat sheets. Um, but with these tabs, it's really easy if I need to go to Romans chapter 6 and show them. And they're all highlighted already for me. So you'll see Romans chapter 5 there and Romans chapter 6 on the next page. Verses 23 right there. It's highlighted for me already. So if I did need to switch to it for whatever reason, I can easily quickly switch to it and tab over. And then um, these highlighted uh, verses are the ones that um, are, are easy to get to. They're either tabbed or they're flagged. So, um, this Revelation uh, chapter 20, verse 14, I then go to tell them about the second death. And I'm not going to preach the whole gospel right now. Um, this video is just going to be a quick overview of my Bible. And then Romans 21, 8. So, I have the tab there. Like I said, I can quickly switch over. And it's already highlighted the verses that I need. So, I can show them real quick. And then, what is hell? Well, hell is an everlasting punishment, Matthew chapter 25. Um, and then I have a little verse right here, which, you know, throughout my soul winning, um, sometimes I come across a need to expand and show them more verses. So what this verse here is, it says, um, does God want us to go to hell? And that's when I would take him to Romans 5, 8. But I can also refer to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, if... Um, if they're not understanding it or maybe to reference another verse on the same subject anyways um, then I go to who is Christ because it says here uh, Christ died for us in this verse so who is Christ then I tell them who Christ is he's the son of the living God and then my third page this is all dedicated to Jesus Christ so this all explains the uh, death burial and resurrection of Jesus so I have uh, Jesus was born of a virgin, Jesus was a man, Jesus was God, uh, Jesus lived a sinless life, Jesus died for us willingly, 
Um, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. Uh, his soul descended into hell. Uh, he physically, bodily resurrected from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. And if you'll, you won't notice it here, but like, let's say this Acts chapter 2, verse 31, his soul descended into hell. And I should probably have that backed up with some more scripture, but let's say I went to that. All these verses are specifically um, highlighted in the color blue. So I can go to Acts chapter 2, verse 31 right there real quick. And minus this wind. <laughs> um, but let's say I had to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 31, right? You'll see right there it's highlighted in blue. So everything about Jesus Christ is highlighted in blue and then anything about uh, salvation by faith is highlighted in orange or pink anyway and then I'll run through this real quick with them usually most people know the basics about Jesus but once in a while um, like this uh, soul descended into hell or even Jesus lived a sinless life sometimes people don't know that so I, I run through that real quick to show them make sure that they're on the same page of what the Bible says and then I switch to um, how do we be saved? What must we do to be saved? And I usually right here ask him a question like, uh, if Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, does everybody automatically go to heaven? <clears throat> and <laughs> usually, you know, if I'm showing them the gospel, I mean, the reason I'm showing them is because they don't know. So then I explain, hey, not everybody goes to heaven. Jesus said, you know, many, say, many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. So what must we do to go to heaven? Well, we must be born again, according to John 3.3. 3. How do we get born again? Well, Jesus tells us, uh, believe on his name. And then why is Jesus' name so important? Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. There is none other heaven given among men. Acts chapter 4, John chapter 14 say that. Um, so this is the big question is uh, what separates those who go to heaven and hell and I spend a little time here explaining the difference between um, he that believeth on him is not condemned and he that believeth not is condemned already um, so basically you have two two categories people who don't believe go to hell people who believe um, are not condemned and go to heaven so money question how do we get saved Acts chapter 16 verse 31 believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. This is where I explain, hey, this, you know, specifically, it's not about going to church. It's not about being baptized. It's not about living a good life and turning away from your sins or repenting of your sins. It's all about believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does it mean to believe? Well, it's pretty important. So Galatians chapter 2, 16 says faith on the uh, faith of Jesus Christ is how we get justified. Well, what is faith? Faith is um, the things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, Hebrews chapter 11. And then I'll usually take them to Romans 3.24 to just really drive this point home. And um, and you'll notice this is in a pink uh, highlight, So, and it has the number 2 right there, so that means that's my number 2 flag. So I can quickly flip over to my 2 flag, uh, Galatians chapter 2, and there we go. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's all really quick. You know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing right now. But, um, um, and also, you know, I like to go to this Romans chapter 3 and uh, really nail that home in Romans 3.23, which is um, right here, uh, believeth in Jesus. I really nail in, hey, it's all about believing in Jesus. It's not about being a good person. You know, that doesn't get us to heaven. Um, and then my, my last sheet, or my you know, second to last sheet, is all on eternal security of the believer. This is all designed to show people that, hey, one, um, you can't lose your salvation. Once you're saved, um, you're saved forever. So you, you can't, first of all, you can't earn your salvation, right? I, I, I drive that point home really hard first, and I nail that down that you can't earn your salvation. It's all by grace through faith, not of works. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. And that's flagged in uh, this, this green flag right here. And then, and then I go to uh, salvation is a free gift, Romans 6, 23. And I explain to them, <laughs> and I explain to them that um, 
<laughs> this girl's over here riding her bike. Uh, but anyway, I explained to them salvation's a free gift. And if, if God gives you a gift of eternal life, he can't take it away from you, otherwise he's a liar. Um, so, and you only have to receive that gift once because it's eternal. And then, and then uh, Jesus gives everybody the gifts because a lot of people, you know, think that hey, you know, huh, well, only special people or predestined people can get this gift. But Jesus, you know, in John six thirty seven says, "Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out." So I explain to them how. Um, every miracle in the Bible um, that Jesus performed, he never turned anybody in a w away who believed in him and had faith in him. So, you know, he offers the free gift of eternal life to everybody. Uh, when does salvation occur? Um, he that heareth the word and believeth on him hath everlasting life. So I explained to them that, hey, I'm preaching to you the word right now. You're hearing it with your ears. And if you're believing it in your heart, then that's the moment you get saved. It's in that that moment. It means you have everlasting life right now. It's present tense. What happens after you believe? Well, you become born again. You become a new creature right there. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, you, you, uh, the Holy Spirit enters you and renews you. Uh, you have the Spirit of God. You become a son or daughter of God. And then chapter 4, or excuse me, point number four, which is flag number four right there, which is color-coded orange orange flag with the orange um, highlight. It says, um, God cannot take away your salvation. So this is where I really drive home eternal security and say, hey, look, God cannot lie to you. He promised you eternal life. If you believe on it, he, he can't ever take it away from you. Um, what happens if you keep sinning? Well, I have flag number five there. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 says, For whom the love, love, Lord loveth, he chasteneth. So this is where I explain to them that, hey, you know, uh, if you keep sinning after you're saved, God's going to punish you, just like a parent would punish a child. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're out of the family. Like if you're saved, if you're born again, you are born of God, and you are a child of God, and there's no way that... Um, uh, you could stop being a child of God, <laughs> basically, even if no matter what sin you commit, because Jesus already paid for your sins on the cross. And then here's in the last point that I drive home is John chapter 10, uh, which said, you know, for people who say, well, what if I have doubts after salvation? Or what if I stop believing? You know, um, can I lose my salvation if I stop believing in Christ down the road? for whatever reason you know it's all theoretical questions but you know in in essence I'm, I'm trying to tell them hey no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand so that means once you're saved nobody um can take you out of god's hand nobody can take away your salvation not even yourself even if you yourself tried to turn away from god and, re and reject god um you're, <laughs> you're already born again you're already in the family and anyways and then I end with the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16. Uh, Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. And then I recap everything for him. So I, I give him a quick brief summary of, of everything. And I tell him, hey, look, you know, when I got here, um, you had said that you, you know, thought you, it was about how good you were. And you weren't sure if you were going to go to heaven. And then I showed you in the Bible, it's all about believe. So then I ask him, you know, if Jesus were standing right here, uh, next to you, would he give you everlasting life? And and if and then I go through you know everything, and I make sure they believe uh, point by point that they're a sinner, that they deserve to go to hell, um, that Jesus died for their sins, and that you know believing on him is all that they can do to get saved, and that they could never lose it. And then I if if everything checks out, and I and I'm confident that that they're saved and they believe it, then I'll tell them, hey. Well, before that, I'll ask them, um, you know, I'll give, during my recap, I'll say, when I first got here, this is what you believe, then I told you this, and I'll ask them, what do you personally believe, right? And, and you know, I, I kind of lead them, <laughs> I kind of ask them leading questions, but, but this is basically the only time in the conversation where, where I will give them a, a non-leading question, meaning I'll ask them, hey, what do you believe, you know? When I got here, you believed it was by works. Then I showed you the Bible, that it's not of works. It's about faith in Jesus. You know, what, And then I give them a choice. What do they believe? 
And then I tell them Romans 10, 17 says, um, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So basically I, I preached to you the word of God. You heard it. So I'm asking them, do you have faith? What do you believe? Where is your faith in? Is your faith in yourself or is your faith in Jesus? Anyway, if I'm confident that they're saved at that point, I'll, um, I'll ask them to say this prayer with me. I'll ask them uh, that we can pray and that uh, we can get it settled right now, once and for all, that they're saved. That way, you know, there's no doubt about it. And they can go at home and write it on their calendar or whatever and throw a party or, <laughs> or whatever and celebrate that, hey, they got saved today. Um, there's no doubt about it because Romans chapter 10, 9 says, Whosoever um, shall confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead shall be saved. Um, so I, I ask him to say this prayer with me, and the prayer is simple. You know, it says, Father in heaven, I confess that I'm a sinner. I know I don't deserve to go to heaven, but I believe that Jesus died for my sins, and I accept your gift of eternal life, Lord. I'm putting all my faith on you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Amen. And, you know, I'll just, I'll just tell them uh, before I pray the prayer, I'll show them what the words are, and I'll say, do you want to pray this prayer, and I'll help you pray this prayer. And all you have to do is bow your head and repeat after me. And, um, I mean, 10 times out of 10 so far, I mean, and I haven't saved 10 people. Like I said, I only saved four so far with this method. But um, I've never had anybody get to this point here and not want to pray. So um, if, if, if you do everything else and you follow everything else, uh, they'll pray with you. And then after that, you know, it's a glorious moment. I'll shake their hand. I'll say, hey, you know, the Bible says you're saved now. Like, according to the Bible, you're saved. If you, if you believe that prayer um, and you testified, I'm your witness. And there's, you know, you're saved. There's nothing you can ever do to not go to heaven. And then I tell them uh, what's next. You know, what's next is, you know, First Peter chapter 2 says you're like a newborn baby. You've just been born again. So... Um, if I have a New Testament Bible, I like to give them a New Testament Bible um, and, and also show them, you know, the YouTube card and tell them, hey, look, as a newborn baby, you know, maybe uh, you don't want to go to church yet. You're not comfortable yet. So, you know, maybe you want to watch preaching online and grow a little bit more first. Or maybe you need to read some more of your Bible first. But I will encourage them to get baptized because Jesus got baptized. That was the first thing he did in the Bible is get baptized. That was the first thing he did. So I'll explain to him how important it is to get baptized as your next step in obedience. And I'll invite him to church, give him an invitation, and um, ask him if they have, uh, if they have any questions. Um, they can contact uh, the pastor or me, and, and, um, and, and I'll really encourage them to go out and win other people to Christ. Now that they know, I'll encourage them to spread the gospel to their family and their friends and their loved ones. Because that's what it's all about, guys. Is uh, It's all about lifting up the name of Jesus and getting people saved. So, um, Anyway, that's my soul winning Bible. Like I said, it's a nice Bible. You can buy this from scratch for $10. And, or um, if, if you pay me $20, I will create this exact same Bible um, for you with all the highlights and tabs and everything in it pre-made for you so you can go out there and win people to Christ um, using this method. Um, anyways, that's the video. Uh, I hope it helps you uh, win people to the Lord. God bless you and have a great day.